I've come here today to ask you guys, really, what is the role of the entrepreneur in today's society? And it's something I put a lot of thought into. And if I ask that question, I typically get perhaps one of three responses. I get that the entrepreneur is to build wealth, the entrepreneur is to create jobs, or that the entrepreneur is to build businesses. And I think if we sort of look historically, and that really is the true sort of role that the entrepreneur has played in society, but I'm really starting to think now that the role of the entrepreneur is about to change. I really believe that the role of the entrepreneur should be and will be to affect positive change on society. Now, when I look at the world today, I see a world that's got a large number of really big issues to tackle over the next couple of decades. And I'm, I'm sort of talking about things like decarbonisation, solving clean water, sorting out our air quality. These are the sort of issues which, they're enormous. They're so big, you can't really conceive how does one person sort of solve those. They're, they're just, they're global, they involve sort of mass societal change. They're just beyond the comprehension to find a solution for, for the individual. But I think we're starting to see a mechanism, and I think we're starting to see how this new role of the entrepreneur can start to fit into this story and can start to show us how we might be able to solve some of these big issues. The first thing we can do with these issues is that we can break them down. We can chunk these enormous issues down and down and down. And as you take a big sort of global issue and you break it down into smaller and smaller parts, eventually they do start to approach a point where an individual person, an individual entrepreneur, can conceive that maybe they can, can start constructing a solution. Not to the entirety of that issue, but maybe they can see that they've got the reach, the scale, to construct a solution just to a small part of that. And of course, solving a small part of a big issue doesn't fix the big issue. But we're kind of lucky there that there's a lot of us. So if we all tackle one bit each, maybe we can solve some of these big issues. So I personally have dedicated my career to decarbonising. I think that's a massively important global issue. And more specifically, it's something which I'm immensely passionate about. But I can't conceive how I can personally have any significant impact on that big thing. How do I solve decarbonisation? It's too big, it's not possible. So I've gone down and I've sort of chunked it down and down and down. And I've taken decarbonisation. And then I've said, OK, how do we just look at a bit of that? How do I look at personal transport? How do I think about taking carbon out of personal transport? And then I keep doing that and still that's too big. But then I can keep chunking that down and chunking that down. And what that got me to be is a point where I thought, well, maybe something I could do as an entrepreneur is sort out the charging of electric vehicles. It's only a small part of that decarbonisation agenda, but it's something which, with the skill sets I've got, with the knowledge I've got, I felt I think I can actually do something of substance in that area. And of course, and a network of electric vehicle charging points on its own doesn't do a great deal of decarbonising. It's pretty useless in isolation. You obviously need a number of electric vehicles. So you're seeing people like Elon Musk with Tesla putting e uh, electric vehicles to the market. And then I'm starting to think, OK, we've got a little bit of momentum here. We've got charging and we've got electric vehicles. You're starting to see two small parts of decarbonisation coming together to deliver a big a part of that bigger issue. But Again, just an electric vehicle and a charging network still doesn't solve it. Electric vehicles are perhaps 70% more efficient on a well-to-wheel basis than in the best internal combustion engine cars. But the, go the global issue here is not to reduce, it's to get rid of, to zero. So if we want to get rid of carbon from the personal transport, we can't use the grid mix we've got today. The carbon created from electricity in the UK today still creates carbon. So you need other people. But you've got other entrepreneurs. You've got the likes of Dale Vince, who runs Ecotricity. He's building the capability to make zero carbon energy in the, in the UK. And now you're starting to see 
three completely effectively unrelated entrepreneurs tackling different bits of a large global issue and you're starting to get a sort of groundswell, are starting to get some meaningful progress towards that goal. And what I think is interesting is that the three examples that I've used there, they didn't sit down in a room together and agree the terms of reference. I'll tackle this bit, you do that bit, you do that bit. There was no sort of pre-agreement. There's no sort of contractual relationship with any of the three people we're talking about. They've all sort of found something they're passionate about and said, I will do the best I can, the best I'm capable of, with my skill set in this area that I'm passionate about. And I'll have faith that other people will come in and fill in the other bits. And having done that, each of those things which in isolation doesn't have value starts to have immense value. So thinking about this a little bit more, this sort of concept of having you know, people who grow businesses have a major sort of social um, agenda in terms of solving some big issues. I think if I'd been standing in front of you guys even five years ago, most people would be telling me, well, if as an entrepreneur you have a sort of social mission, it's going to detract, it's going to dilute your attention away from the growing of your business. Your business is going to be less successful as a result of you being conflicted between the, the typical sort of capitalist objectives of growing business and having a social objective. But my experience over the last few years has been completely the opposite of that. I genuinely believe that having a business which has got a social objective actually is one of the critical success factors of my business. The fact that we've got a mission, the fact that we've got a reason to be, is not diluting our effectiveness, it's not making it harder. Quite the opposite, it's accelerating us. It's making it easier to scale. It's providing a filter. Each one of our staff, each one of our customers, everybody we interface with a business, understands simply not just what we do, but why we do it. And that allows them to decide, does this vision of the future, does this company's view of what's going to happen next fit with my own personal view of the, of the future? And if it does, you get this immense engagement. You get people who are enormously loyal to what you're doing. And that's one of the key things you need in your business, considering customers, staff, all the other bits that need loyalty to your business. give you a sort of real world example of that if I look at the sort of web stats on my, my company website and think which is the page which people are going to more often and then initially I think well we make charging points so probably people are going to click on the page which talks about charging points why else would you be on our website and it isn't that one so I think okay maybe it's the software it's all held together by some clever software maybe people are interested in that perhaps they're clicking on that and if it isn't that, then surely it's the map that shows you as an electric vehicle driver where you can find all the charging points around the UK. That must be the, the, the most popular page. But the thing which both sort of surprised and delighted me really is it's none of those three pages. The most clicked on page on the company website is about us. It's the page where people are going not to find out what we do, but why we do it. Who are the people behind this and why have they dedicated such a large part of their careers to doing this? And I think then it says this part of, now I understand the why, does it fit with my view of the future? Can I relate to that? Can I align my vision of the future with what this company is doing? And if the answer comes back yes, you get this immense engagement from the customer. Taking this a little bit further again, this sort of engagement piece we've been talking about, it seems to me that it helps every single aspect of scaling the business. So when you think about the key challenges you have in growing a business as an entrepreneur, it's things like finding the right team members. Having this mission helps you find the right team members. It's about things like making sure that you've got a loyal employee base that really believe in what you're doing and are willing to go the extra mile for you. If they buy into a mission, if they buy into something bigger than the sort of traditional capitalist idea of let's just make sure we're a bigger business than we were yesterday, then you get them this all extra engagement. Your customers engage with you more and they, become, they don't just become customers for you, they become advocates because they fundamentally agree with the why. When we're out interviewing, when we're looking for new people to join the business, one of the questions I always ask is why do you want to come and work here? Why here? There's lots of places to work. And I think a few years ago, the standard answers which came back, they were things like, you know, super fast growth, really excited about how fast you guys are growing. Or perhaps it was to do with 
uh, we think we can make a lot of money in this sector. Or maybe it was something to do with, we think it's heard it's a great place to work. Now, every one of those responses to me doesn't really do it for me. There's one response I'm looking for for that question. And it's because I see what you're doing, what you are doing is important. The second I hear that in an interview from someone saying I'd like to come on board, they believe what we're doing is important. That tells me everything I need to know about that individual. They're not here for any of the old school reasons. They're genuinely here because they want to help make a contribution to a real significant world issue. And they understand that with that, you have to be a successful business. If you're not a successful business in some of the sort of more traditional metrics, your impact is less. So they do get that. And I think this is only just accelerating. We're starting to see it now, but it's growing and growing and growing. Millennials are sort of entering the workforce and they're now starting to climb up through the ranks of the business. They're starting to get into sort of, you know, significant positions of power within businesses. And everything we've just talked about really sort of goes in spades with the millennials. It's not sort of a nice optional extra for the next generation to have some sort of mission that they agree with. It's becoming absolutely fundamental to them. They, they basically won't engage with you unless they understand this why and that they agree with that why. It's an absolute main part of what they're doing. If they, there isn't a mission, they don't engage. If it's the wrong mission, they don't engage. But if the mission is right, they engage doubly. And if that's the future of the workforce, then it starts to show how important some of these things are. So if the role of the entrepreneur is truly changing from those sort of three capitalist sort of targets that I originally shared with you, onto this person who is responsible for effecting global change. And if we accept that we've got some of these really large sort of global issues like the decarbonisation one that I'm quite passionate about, then hopefully we're starting to see now that there's a mechanism and there's a mechanism which is growing and growing and growing in the way that we can actually tackle these great big issues. And furthermore, we're starting to see that this mechanism is actually giving businesses, entrepreneurs, a competitive advantage. It's not what we also used to think, that having this social mission detracts from your business's ability to grow. It's actually becoming a main success factor. It's actually multiplying a business's ability to grow. And that really, I think, is the message that I'm here today to get out. You can build your business more effectively if you've got a social mission. It really helps you grow in all of the key ways which allow you to scale your business. Every difficult element of building a business and making it bigger and larger and have more impact is affected positively by having a major social agenda. And when you walk that forward and you realise that the next generation is thinking this even more than the current generation, even then the one after that hopefully will be more again, we get this wonderful position where we can start to see a mechanism how these large global challenges that we're going to see over the next few decades can actually be solved. And I think that really gives us a really nice idea that it could be that the next generation of entrepreneurs genuinely leave the world in a better place than they found it in. And I don't think that's the thing that many of the previous generations can truly say. So I genuinely think that's something we should all be celebrating. But we've got to help get the message out there. Build businesses around a social mission. The social mission will help you build your business more effectively. And together, we can fix some of the really big challenges that the world faces. Thank you.